for a night mundo. The fires that were starting earlier today that we didn't film have spread quite far and there's a warning around our area that the fires may be closing off the roads to our town. So we're not panicking, but we can see a lot of fire around our house right now. So while we're still in control of everything and there's no smoke, we've packed everything that we might need into the car. And about now, we're deciding to scout out the area, just drive around and see if there are suitable exit points if we need them. And if not, if things start to die down, we'll come back home. I'm just about to shut down my computer. I've just been tracking where the fires are. We're here and most of the fires are below us. So we probably have to head north if the roads are closed. Story's already in the car and we're just making final contact with Vince and Linda so that know that we are going to lose internet in a minute. Story okay? Yep. She's okay. Okay, good girl. Hmm? We're all here. Right, we are all packed in the car. We are going to drive into town first to see if anything's happening. Some neighbours are out in the streets just standing and watching. So um, we're going to see what's happening and see if we actually need to leave Motagua itself. But if we do, we've got everything with us and we are ready to go. It is really weird because <laughs> There's no sirens, there's no, you can't even smell the smoke, but we can see it from every window of the house and it's quite scary. So we're just driving down our normal main street now and you can see the fire quite clearly over there now. It is a big one. We have driven past a lot of people just standing outside on the street, <laughs> outside their houses maybe just preparing to go but no one is actually leaving yet but the fire is huge <sighs> we've just driven to the highest point that we could get to in town and it is horrendous this is where we came to watch the rally the other day look at the size of that fire flip that is not good Honestly, that is quite scary because just earlier today we could see the fire and it looked like it was about 10 15 miles away. And we said to ourselves, Do you know what? It would take ages for that fire to reach anywhere near here, and it hasn't. It's taken a matter of hours and it's traveled that far and fast. So, I'd we'll, say about two hours, two hours, yeah. So, we need to be smart about this. Right, we were just driving down the road and we got to a roadblock and the police told us to turn around and go back towards our village. So that's what we're doing. He seemed to think it was safer to stay at home. Mm. He asked us where we're living right now and he said the town that we live in, it's probably safer to stay there than it is to drive up. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, we can't actually get back to our house. They've blocked the road stopping us from going back into our village and they've just told us to stay here by the side of the road. We have actually managed to find a way back to our house because the GNR seem a little bit confused. The ones to the north told us it's safer at our house. The ones to the south told us it's not safe at our house. So as far as I'm concerned, they don't really know and we have to judge this best as we can. Right now there's no smoke in our actual village itself. I can't even really smell it that much. And right here we're connected to the internet properly. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stay around and see if any of the neighbors are leaving. A lot of them seem to still be in place, doing the same thing, waiting and watching the fires. There isn't actually any trees directly coming into our home area, like there's no forest backing up onto the house or anything so if we do need to escape I'm pretty confident that it's not a busy village we can get to where we need to be in the meantime Sasha is just watering all of the 
hedges and flammable things around the house in case something is to happen and we have to leave but we're basically staying by the packed car story is asleep Eden is asleep in the car so this is how we're going to play it for now make sure you water those plants good <laughs> keep us safe ah, that's not good the power just went out but the power to our house is still on it's a bit odd We're just getting some more water from the house and we're going to head back out again. We've been keeping a track of the fire from our house to see how far and what direction it's going in but we can't actually see the fire anymore which is a good sign. There's just an orange glow on the top of the trees now whereas before I could actually see flames. There are still some neighbours dotted around town that haven't left as well so we're not the only people still here. Above the houses in that direction I can still see some smoke, possibly flame. The electricity hasn't cut off to our house, which means the internet is still running mm -hmm. and we've been in contact with pretty much everybody. There are people that we know that live around here yeah. that are stuck outside of town who can't get home yeah. and they don't know what situation their houses are in. So we're just messaging them to let them know what we're seeing here on the ground and what the situation is. It's bad. Yeah. It's bad. Not the best welcome back to central Portugal, I must say. No. But I do have a bag of wet rags in the car. That's smart. Yes. Right now, we're going to head back up to the viewpoint overlooking the town just to see progress mm. or the, you know, if it's died off. Because yeah. it looks like it's died off. It does. And I don't like, I feel a bit useless. At least we can watch it with yeah. our eyes there because no one really knows what's going on. The internet is delayed. The news is delayed. Even the police are delayed. So... Let's go and have a look by, by ourselves. We're going to leave this light on here so we'll know if the power's cut off when we get home. When I woke up this morning, I wasn't even planning on vlogging today. Little did we know that we would be evacuating our house. It's a bit crazy. I don't want to wake up story. So there are still quite a few people out on the street standing and there also seems to be a lot more people in their houses now. We can see a lot of houses with their lights on which it didn't look like there was anybody in before so people seem to have made their way back to their homes you can still see the smoke there but it's now been two and a half hours since we first left the house and when we first started filming it was very very orange and we could see flames and it has died down a lot so we're at the viewpoint we're almost facing exactly east i'm gonna have a look and see what it looks like out there now it's not half as bad as it was earlier. There's still people up here looking, but you saw the difference. Well, we are gonna go back home and I think it's gonna be safe enough to not be sitting in the car <laughs> for another two hours because it does look like it's died down a lot and it doesn't look like it's got any closer or any worse. I think we're going to go and put Story to bed in her cot and get out of this air. I feel a bit better now that we've seen it from a vantage point because when we first started filming and when we first saw it I was scared. <laughs> I was very scared. That was a horrible sight to see at night time as well. Everything's always worse at night time and seeing the flames in the darkness was quite nerve-wracking. Do you agree? I haven't really been scared all night. I've been quite confident that it wasn't coming our way and that we've been in control of the situation all night but I can see how this is a worrying situation, yes. It is worrying <laughs> and the only thing you, you have to do is to just stay calm because once you start panicking that's when, you, you know, it, that's when it gets much worse. I think it's safe to go home now. I'm not going to unpack the cart though, <laughs> I'll leave all the stuff in here until morning time. Okay, we're home. Back in the house, we still have power, we still have internet. Eden the dog is over here, eating what remains of her dinner. She doesn't seem concerned about anything. I filled up some um, jugs and bottles of water just in case we lost water, but that's still on. Um, yeah. yeah, we've still got everything we need at the moment. It smells a lot less smoky now, and it looks a lot less smoky. Let's have a look out the window. This is where we first saw the fires. an orange glow in the sky but 
that's about it. It's already half 11 at night. There is one thing that tonight has taught me about just being in a situation like this in a foreign country. You really do need to learn a foreign language. You need to learn to speak the language properly as soon as you can. You do feel isolated and you don't feel like you can just walk up to the local villages and talk because most of the people in our village don't speak any English and yes. our Portuguese is very bad. But on another hand, if this was in our own country and something like this was happening, people wouldn't know what was going on there either. It's yeah. not like just because you can speak the language everyone will know the situation and the solution. That's true. It just makes you feel a bit more comfortable but at the end of the day no one really knows what's going on. I do find that people just follow the leader. Most of tonight we were just watching what other people were yeah. doing and making your own decisive action requires a lot of confidence and you have to think you know what you're doing even when most of the time it's okay it's all right Eden. we're okay now you don't know what you're doing no. so and we were watching our neighbors and every time they left we were like oh where are they going but then they would come back and be like okay good they're back yeah i mean even we did it we left the village several times today and people watched us go and you're right Eden. <laughs> Yeah, see? Just as we came back now, our neighbour George, he was out on the street mm. eating an apple and he yeah. just waved at us like he does normally, so yeah. he, he didn't, didn't seem worried concerned at, at all. all. So us looking at that, we think, well if George is alright, then we're alright, you know, so yeah, I, I see where you're coming from. I just think even if you can talk to people, it might even be worse because, you know, people start spreading yeah. stories and... They might put fear into you that doesn't need to be there. Yeah. You go with the mob mentality, don't you? So if other people are frightened, then you would feel frightened. Yeah. So it's, it's human nature, isn't it? Yeah. It's human nature to just follow crowds and it's taught me how I would feel and how I'd react in a situation. And I think we did okay yeah. today. <laughs> I, I felt like we've been in control, like I said earlier. Yeah, I hope that it's not too bad out there yeah. where it's actually burning. Yeah, because we have been quite lucky. I've read on the internet that there's various other isolated points in this actual village where homes are burning and people have no power and no communication. So even though we're in the same village, we haven't experienced that. We've just seen it from afar. We're quite lucky tonight. Um dear, it's now the following morning. I think we can safely say that the fires have cleared up for now. Hopefully they won't restart. Eden is out for her morning wee. We left the car packed with all our stuff last night, so it's still all in there. A little bit of life in the village. Some people have come back to their homes. I don't think many people left this village, actually. I don't think we've quite grasped the scale of what happened last night. People we know have lost their homes entirely. We are very lucky. Even the car doesn't have that much ash on it. The seats around me don't have much ash on them, which means that we must have been very lucky with the positioning of the wind. Our home in our village here is still intact. Considering the extent of what we saw last night, this is what's on the car this morning. It's not that bad. I can't smell any smoke in the air. And rain is actually forecast for today, which is very good because it hasn't rained in months. And obviously that's a big factor when it comes to the forest fires around here. If it does rain today, it just makes us feel a little bit safer that it won't restart and we can relax a little bit. We've decided that before we unpack the car, we want to go and check and see what the damage is yeah. like and see if there's any more. Assess. The situation. We have eaten a dog in here again. You gonna story the baby? Uh -huh. <laughs> they don't seem too concerned about anything, which is a good thing. Eden doesn't seem concerned about anything right now, but actually last night, about two hours before we left the house, she was really unsettled and was pacing around. She wouldn't lay down, she wouldn't eat her dinner. We were like, oh, what's the matter with Eden? And yeah, she didn't calm down again until she was actually in the car, <laughs> ready to go. Just driving through the village and it is pretty quiet, but there are a few people around. The sun is trying to burn through some of this smoke. You can see it up there looking very orange. We have driven up to the viewpoint overlooking Motagua, the church up here, and we thought we'd be able to see the other 
towns next to Motagua and see what it was looking like but we did not expect this actually this part has been burnt and there are still lots of pockets of burning and smouldering bits of forest we're not the only people up here there's quite a few others have come up to check on the damage but I'm not gonna hang around for long I really didn't think that the fire was on this part this is where Sasha and I stood when we made our living in Mortagua video and the view was lovely then now it's looking a bit messy very burned it's quite shocking really I can smell the smoke and you can see where the fires even made it up here and all these trees along here and leading all the way down the back were on fire it's terrible really we read on the news this morning that over 380 fires have been reported so far as of this morning and there may be more leading through the day so how does that happen how does that many fires all happen at one go it seems a bit suspicious i can still feel the heat coming off these logs you can hear it crackling too well, i'm not going to hang around up here any longer it could restart any minute it's terrible back at home now the village seems to be returning to some sort of normality we've brought a few of our bags back into the house but we haven't unpacked them we are exhausted it's just been a long night emotionally and physically too we stayed up very late everybody told us not to sleep because you never know when a fire could restart I'm going to end the video for today. Not very enjoyable content this time, having to evacuate our home and basically didn't know what to do, but I'm glad everything worked out okay in the end, even though story's strangling me. Ow! Okay, hopefully tomorrow will be a bit better and we'll see you next time. Bye. Good girl.